and today we are talking about golf. But not just any kind of golf. We're talking disc golf. Why disc golf? And why are we talking about disc golf to help us learn about ball golf? Well, the answer is that there's a lot of similarities between disc golf and ball golf. And by understanding some of the basic principles behind disc golf, you can actually improve your ball golf game. So let's go ahead and let's learn a few of the basics and let's go ahead and translate them into our game so that we can start having more fun and scoring better. Now, similar to ball golf, in disc golf, we're gonna have a variety of discs that we can use. And similar to ball golf, different discs do different things. So just like in ball golf, you take your driver from the tee box, you take your putter on the greens and your wedges around the greens and your irons hitting into the greens. The same thing is true with disc golf. There are different discs, they fly differently and they have different purposes. So the first thing is understanding what the differences are between all these discs so that you can make a better decision on what to use when. So if we take a look here, I have a variety of different discs in the bag with these over here on the right being much thinner and these over here on the left being much thicker and then everything else in between. Now what we're talking about here, let's just grab this one as an example. Most disc golf discs are going to have four numbers on them. And these numbers tell us a little bit about how the disc flies given a good throw. And this is really important because just like in ball golf, if you don't make a good swing, the club's not gonna perform the way that you want it to. And so that's why it's so important in a club fitting environment to get the clubs to fit your swing and your technique so that you don't have to change your swing and technique to fit the club. So the first number that I wanna look at here is speed. Speed is rated from one to 14, with the higher the number being the farther that the disc can potentially fly. So this one right here, this is a distance driver, speed of 12. Over here, we have a putter with a speed of two. So what that means is given a similar throw, the disc with the higher speed number, in this case 12, should go farther than the disc with the lower speed, two. The thing is though, it takes a good throw to get the disc to do what it needs to do. And so this number is important because if you don't have the proper amount of speed behind your throw, the higher speed disc is not going to go farther. And oftentimes, throwing a slower disc will actually get you more distance because Kind of like in golf, if you have a slower swing, maybe you hit a hybrid or maybe like a five wood farther than you hit a driver. And we'll touch on more of that later. But that's because if you don't have speed behind your throw or behind your swing, the club won't perform to its, uh, its maximum performance. So in this case, I'm going to use a moderate speed disc because I don't have a super fast throw. And it'll end up going farther than if I threw a super fast disc. So let's see what happens. Now, as we're walking to that throw, let's talk about the second number that's on a disc. And that second number is glide. And on this disc, we see that the glide is a five. So what is glide? Glide is the the disc's ability to float or stay up in the air. And you might be thinking, oh, well, okay, then I just want as much glide as possible because I want my disc to stay up in the air. But glide on a disc is very similar to spin on the golf ball. More spin isn't necessarily better, particularly on higher speed discs or lower lofted clubs. Let's think the driver. Okay, if we take a look at tour players, their driver usually only spins between, let's say, 1,500 and 2,500 RPMs because they're swinging very fast, 100, 110, 120 miles an hour. And if we had a ton of spin on a 
disc, or in this case, uh, uh, or I should say a ball, that's going really fast, it's just gonna balloon up. So you really wanna get the glide of the disc to match the speed of the throw depending on the shot you're trying to hit. And the same thing is true in ball golf, is we want the spin of the ball to match the speed that the ball comes off the club as well as the trajectory that it comes off. And if we can do that, then all of a sudden, the ball flies the way that we want it to. Or in this case, the disc glides in the way that we want it to. So more isn't always better, it always comes back to what's the shot that we're trying to hit. And this is true in ball golf and disc golf, is there's no one same shot any two times. It's about seeing what's in front of us and using the tools that we have to get as close as possible. Now, what about the last two numbers that are on a disc? Well, these last two are called turn and fade. And fade is a word that we've heard in the golf world. Now the difference is in disc golf, the disc will curve in two directions. First, if it's, uh, let's say you're throwing your right handed and you're throwing it backhand. Backhand is right hand, throwing it with the back of your right hand, like most people do. The disc is initially gonna move to the right, that's the turn, and then it's going to fade to the left. And if you're a right-handed golfer and you think, okay, well, normally my fade goes to the right, you're correct. A fade is when the disc or ball moves away from your front line. So if you're right-handed, throwing it backhand, okay, right-handed, throwing it backhand, then when it goes to the left, it's moving away from my center. The turn is coming closer to my center. So in a disc, it's gonna go one way, then the other. In ball golf, it only goes one way. It might start right or left, but once it starts to curve, it doesn't come back. And so it's just a matter of understanding that it's always going to curve, it's just a matter of how much it curves. Now, depending on the club that you're using, things with, let's say, less loft, like a four iron, may curve way more than something with a ton of loft, like, let's say, a wedge, which is typically why players are better with their short irons and wedges, because you can get away with a less efficient technique. And the same thing is true here in the disc world, is we can take, depending on the disc, and have a disc that's going to be more stable and fly a little bit straighter, or we can have one that curves a lot. And you might be thinking, well, why would I want a disc that curves a lot? Well, it's the same reason why we see players on tour try to shape the ball and hit fades to the right or draws to the left. It's because depending on the shot, like right here, we have a shot into this disc, or this basket, I'm sorry. Now right here, there's no trouble. Here's my disc, there's the basket. It's pretty much right there. But let's just say that I was behind a tree, okay? Maybe I'm behind the tree and I need just as an example, to throw the disc on an angle to get it to curve around the tree. Not bad. So I started it off to the right and let it curve back. But knowing how the disc is going to fly can help me better predict how I should throw it. And the same thing is true with your golf clubs. If you understand, for example, that you're playing a game improvement iron, which is designed to curve less, be more forgiving and fly a little bit straighter, you need to know that because it's different than say playing a player's blade, which is going to curve a lot, it has more spin, it's gonna be less forgiving. And there's a time and place for either of those, depending on your style of play and what kind of shot you're trying to hit. So it's easy enough when we're talking about discs to just look at the numbers that are on it. But unfortunately in ball golf, we don't normally get numbers like that. That's why it's so important to go through a proper fitting to understand exactly what the club does, what its tendencies are, because there is no perfect it's just being able to predict. And if you can predict the shot to the best of your ability, then you will miss in a closer, more favorable place. And when you miss in a closer, more favorable place, you have better opportunities to save that next shot. Being able to predict what the shot is going to do or how the disc is gonna fly is super, super important. 
earlier we said with a right-hander throwing backhand, the disc is going to turn to the right, then fade to the left. Well, what if we have a shot that requires the opposite? We want it to actually turn left and then fade to the right. Well, we can easily do that by changing the way that we throw it. By going from a backhand into a forehand, the disc rotates in a different direction and that creates a different flight. And the same thing is true in ball golf. If you can learn how to hit a fade and how to hit a draw, then we can make the ball curve to the right or we can make the ball curve to the left, enhancing your ability to play the game depending on what the course is asking you to do. Now, a backhand in disc golf and a forehand in disc golf are different techniques just like hitting a fade and hitting a draw are in a sense different techniques. And we have to change how we set up to the shot as well as the disc that we're using to get that shot to happen. So let's try one. So let's talk wind, because obviously in either sport, disc golf or ball golf, you're playing out in the elements and wind is going to be a factor. Well, if you remember when we were talking about glide, Glide is the disc's kind of resistance to falling, its ability to stay up and stay floating. Well, that is equivalent to the spin of a golf ball. Now, if we have wind that's coming straight at us, it's going to enhance the spin or enhance the glide, which means if you have a high glide disc that you're throwing straight into the wind, it's probably going to float up kind of like when you hit a high spin shot on the golf course into the wind, it floats up and it's going to change how the ball or the disc flies. This is partly why some players will switch balls if they're playing in windy conditions, because maybe they have a ball that performs differently in the wind and it can work to their advantage. If we're downwind, we actually want more glide because the downwind is gonna push the disc down and we need more glide to lift it up. So less glide into the wind, more glide downwind. Same thing with our golf shot. If we have a spinny shot into the wind, it's gonna balloon up. If we have a spinny shot downwind, it's just gonna ride that wind and go a little bit farther. Now, farther isn't always better. I think that's an important thing to understand, especially in a game of accuracy, where you're trying to get the ball to go into this four inch hole in the ground. Longer isn't always better. It all comes back to predictability. I just want to know to the best of my ability, based on my skill and based on everything else, I just want to know where the ball, or in this case, the disc is going to end up. Because if I can predict that, then I can play the course and I can have good course management skills and good course management skills are oftentimes better than having perfect technique because really three bad shots and a good putt is still par, <laughs> right? So we just need to manage our way around. So in this case, this hole, we're a little bit downwind, a little crosswind. It's going kind of that way toward the two o'clock mark, but way down in the trees there, you can see the basket. So I want in an ideal world, something that's going to start off to the right and then drop down and really good players, not saying I'm one of them, they'd probably go for that little field goal between the trees there and try to get it to fall all the way down to where that basket is. Now, I might not be a really good player, but I understand what I'm trying to do and I understand what my discs will do given a good throw. Now, if there's only one thing that you take away from this video, it's that predictability is probably the most important component into playing good golf, whether it's disc golf or ball golf, predictability. And I know that most people say they want more consistency, but I'm gonna go a step farther and say, I believe people say consistency because what they really want is predictability. They just want it to do the same thing every time. Now I go a step farther and say, I don't want it to do the same thing every time. Now it might help in certain situations, but what I really want is to be able to predict where the ball, or in this case, where the disc is going to go. Whether it's the same every time or not, that doesn't matter to me. I don't care if it goes to the right or if it goes to the left. I just wanna predict it. Because if I can predict it, I can play it. And if I can play it, then I can play it with confidence. And if I can play it with confidence, then I'm probably going to score well. 
you got to know your distances right and that's it's a tricky thing especially if you don't have access to something like a track man or, or some kind of launch monitor but it really is if the name of the game is predictability and you don't know how far each of your clubs or in this case discs go then it's going to be very difficult to play a good round and so this just popped in my head because i was just playing this par three here and just didn't even think i just grabbed my driver and i ended up throwing it about 30 feet past the basket which is awesome for me <laughs> uh, but it's not not good uh, in the sense of scoring because had i known had i been able to predict that that was what was going to happen i would have taken a different disc or something that wouldn't have flown as far so very very important that you do know how every how, how far everything goes all right so by now if there's one thing you got out of this is that predictability is the name of the game especially when you find yourself on something that looks like this overwhelming right to think that here we are in the middle of a heavily wooded forest and now you just gotta throw your disc <laughs> and part of it is that from the mindset we think oh man i hope i throw it well i hope i can even find it after i've thrown it and that's because we're focusing on everything that could go wrong we're focusing on the trees we're focusing on the tall grass and all of that and the same thing is true in ball golf you can't think about the trouble you have to think about what you do want to happen so it's simple doesn't mean it's easy but the key here is to focus purely on the throw and the flight that you see in your mind's eye and if you can just commit to the feeling of that throw then the result is going to happen but if you focus on the trouble about hitting trees about losing the disc whatever it is that's exactly what's going to happen now it's not a guarantee that thinking positive thoughts will give you a good result but it's almost a guarantee that if you don't think positively then you will get a bad result so you have to stay positive you have to stay optimistic you have to visualize the shot so in this case i see that the path goes down there's a little bit of open room on the left right after this first big tree and then it opens back up to the right so i'm going to throw a shot that tries to start down the path, turns left, and comes back to the right. And that's all I can do, is I can try to predict what's about to happen. So the next time you're out playing some ball golf, I hope that this video pops into your head and gets you thinking before your shot and trying to predict what it's going to do. And again, very important to distinguish that predicting what it's going to do is not the same as trying to force something to happen so when you're out on the course take a step back take a deep breath look at what's in front of you what's the shot you're trying to hit and then look at the tools that you have to work with and ask yourself do i have the ability or the skill to make it do what i'm trying to make it do if you can go for the shot go for it if you can't Play the shot that you can. Play something that you can predict. You don't have to be a hero. There's an optimal shot for whatever the course is asking you to do, and then there's an optimal shot for what you're able to do. And when you play within yourself, and you let the equipment do what it's intended to do within whatever level of ability you have, that's when beautiful things happen. But it's not just stand up there and beat it like you're on the driving range pulling out a seven iron. It's not how this game works. We have to look at what's in front of us. We have to make the best decision that we can for the shot that's presented to us. We have to execute to the best of our ability. And if we have all that in place and we've done our due diligence, you will miss better, therefore you will play better.